the alert. It was expected and preparations were made. But no one knew, no one could know what challenge each one would have to face. And only now, when all of this has become history, can one view it in retrospect and try to comprehend. Comprehend the events, gigantic in scale and rife with tensions. Hundreds of Navy planes of all kinds and types. Marine contingents, surface ships and submarines of various classes and intended for various purposes. All fleets of the Soviet Union took part in these large-scale maneuvers, the largest in the history of our country, under the code name of Operation Ocean. These maneuvers were staged in the Atlantic Ocean, the North and Norwegian Seas, the Barents and the Baltic, the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. They were also carried out in the Pacific Ocean, in the seas of Ohotsk, and Japan, and the Philippine Sea. They were carried out under the command of Admiral of the Fleet, Gorshkov, Commander-in-Chief of the Soviet Navy. Operation Ocean. The maneuvers began in April. Thick ice and heavy fog obstructed the way of the Red Banner Northern Fleet under the command of Admiral Lobo. Each seaman considered it a great honor to stand watch during the days when the country celebrated the centennial of Lenin's birth. Members of the Northern Fleet joyfully heard the order of the Defense Minister of the USSR, which would confer the name of honor Leninets on the best submarine, the winner of the Jubilee competition. It was not too long ago that the delegates to the 23rd Party Congress applauded the heroes of the Around the World crew, a contingent of Soviet nuclear submarines. Memorable words of Gagarin. The conquest of ocean depth is no less complicated than the conquest of space. But today, establishing space and underwater routes has become an everyday occurrence. All meridians and latitudes are accessible to nuclear vessels. Swift is the thrust of Soviet science. Irrepressible, the development of our technology. But no matter how advanced the technology, the last word belongs to those who master it. The words of the famed Admiral Nahimo still ring true, and the sailor is still the ship's main engine. Yes, without him, the powerful diesels and reactors remain still. Blind the radar. Silent, the subaqueous ranging equipment. Only the seaman, with his will and knowledge, will prevent the ship from straying from course. In today's Navy, each sailor, as a rule, is a high school graduate. Each officer holds a college degree. But this is not enough. Training is a must. It can only be obtained at sea. One cannot develop a man's courage without placing him into a situation which demands it. And Operation Ocean provided precisely such conditions. 
In the course of these maneuvers, not only the Baltic fleet ships under the command of Admiral Mihailin, all fleets experienced the fury of hurricanes and cyclones. It was then that many young sailors understood what the words, one for all, mean. Precision and harmony. The crews of two ships act like one. Refueling from a tanker is carried out in mid-ocean. Attention, the slightest deviation from course and jets of fuel leading from the air tanker will strike the plane. Major Sherboza, deputy regiment commander for political affairs, has to be a sniper to make the connection with fuel lines the first time around. During the maneuvers, political workers were to be found in the toughest spots, where boldness, resoluteness, and the guiding will of communists were needed. Day and night, in any kind of weather, Navy pilots stood watch flying at maximum range. Naval air reconnaissance was well organized in all fleets. The Red Banner Pacific Fleet, under the command of Admiral Smirnov. And the Red Banner Black Sea Fleet, thousands of nautical miles away, under the command of Admiral Sisoyev. During the deployment of the main forces, air reconnaissance searched for the alleged enemy. And first of all, the nuclear missile submarine, the opponent's greatest striking power. The planes are equipped with dozens of search systems and instruments. Surface ships are equally well equipped. The ability to use these systems was demonstrated many a time by cruiser Leningrad under the command of Mikhail Sergeyevich Zvezdovsky and cruiser Moskva with Boris Sergeyevich Romanov in command. The crews of these two cruisers have been competing for a long time. Everyone is involved. Motorman First Class, Chief Petty Officer Mikhail Boris. Engine room crew with Chief Petty Officer Vladimir Malik in charge. And the subaqueous sound rangers. Alexander Ukegel will do all in his power in order to be the first to locate the sub. The helicopter pilots are trying to solve a similar problem. Using their instruments, the helicopter crews will listen and survey the ocean depths. The submarine is not all that elusive and noiseless. If the trained ear of a subaqueous ranging specialist can catch dolphin talk, the submarine will not be able to elude him. Contact established, he'll report, and state the target coordinates. One must strike a blow at a sub without any missiles, or it will reply in kind. Maneuvers are like war. Attack is followed by counterattack using live projectiles. The 
Modern naval battle dynamics demand speedy and accurate decisions on the part of the commanders. Computer technology renders assistance. Computers will process all data. And communications men will pass it on. Submarine Commander Gromov has received an order. His crew is ready to strike at the aggressor at any point on the globe. Of course, this is only a simulated nuclear explosion. But the target has been hit with precision. Red alert. Radio controlled high speed target plane overhead. It has been located with the help of radar while hundreds of miles away from the ship. The target plane has been brought down. The situation changes. Now there is another target, a self-propelled ship. One must be ready for everything, including an attempt to save the ship. This was simulated in a manner that would make the situation resemble reality as closely as possible. First comes the task of sealing the hole. Next comes the task of swiftly donning protective radiation suits and treating the deck with a special solution. The battle does not die down. The enemy introduces new reserves. attack.
Operation Ocean is not only ships waging battle. It is also rockets, airstrikes, artillery duels in which the protagonists see each other on their radar screens only. These maneuvers also entail a marine landing exercise. This landing was observed by the Defense Minister of the USSR, Marshal of the Soviet Union, Grechko. Komsomol members, Lebet, Wolf, Danilov, Digitalenko were the standard bearers for the assault unit of the landing forces. This is the name given, according to Marine Guard wartime tradition, to those crew members who are entrusted with the colors. The colors had to be delivered and hoisted on the faraway northern shores of the Ribachi Peninsula, where each stone is a memorial to the heroism of its defenders. For 1,150 days, the Marines held out, never letting the enemy take an inch of our soil. And now, 25 years Years later, a new generation landing force prepares to storm Ribachi. The planes clear the way for them with a bombing strike. Ship artillery covers the landing of the Marines. The landing is underway. And nothing, not the high winds, nor the roll of the ship, nor the great waves that wash over the vision slit, nothing can stop the amphibious tanks. These immediately enter into a duel with tanks defending the shoreline. The attackers are not to be stopped. Swift and bold is the blow struck by the heirs to the glory of the Marine Guard. Congratulating the participants on the end of the maneuver, Marshal of the Soviet Union, Grechko, spoke about loyalty to guard tradition. I served the Soviet Union. Operation Ocean has been concluded. It was a true display of our Navy's might, the highest form of its operational and tactical preparedness in planning and carrying out of large-scale naval operations involving the interaction of all types of military forces. And here, our country's shores. How many times we return to them in our thoughts during the cruise and the long separation from those who are dear to our hearts. Return to these shores and awaited these fateful moments. This is how Operation Ocean participants were met all over the country. They demonstrated excellent combat skills. Each of those who participated in these maneuvers was decorated with the Lenin Jubilee Medal for irreproachable service.